Good evening, Syracuse, and welcome back to yet another episode of Syracuse Unpeeled, the place that you, for some reason, keep returning to hear me talk about literally nothing that's actually important. I'm your host, Alex O'Toole, and tonight I am obviously Chanel Oberlin from the new hit show Scream Queens. And I am joined tonight by Taryn Bricchio, a.k.a. Buzz Lightyear, Ellie Haynes, who's a banana, and I'm joined by Kate Bernhardt, who is Graciela, the newest housewife from the Real Housewives of New Jersey. Yes, we are all wearing Halloween costumes, and yes, Halloween was last week, but we're just not over it, so bear with us. Tonight we'll be talking about everything from Justin Bieber's breakdowns to making money off of your Halloween candy. So let's jump right into it. Last week, Justin Bieber had two public meltdowns in less than 24 hours. The first was during a radio show, a radio interview with a Spanish radio station where they asked Justin to help him break the internet, and he looked annoyed and eventually walked out of the studio and never came back. The second time was during a performance in Oslo, Norway, and he tried to wipe a spill off the stage, but got mad because a fan in the front row got in his way, so he naturally responded by saying, no, I'm done, I'm not doing the show, and later took to Instagram to apologize to the rest of the crowd that the front row ruined it for everyone. Taryn, I'm very passionate about Justin Bieber. How do you feel about these meltdowns? Honestly, I think he can do whatever he wants. He's been killing the, the music game. Okay, sorry. What Boom. do you mean? What do you Latest, mean? Latest, what was it? I'll show you. Honestly, if he doesn't want to be touched, don't touch him. He's Justin Bieber. Am I right? You right. You're right. You're He's right. acting the age of his YouTube, like, years, and he's thriving still. Glory like, days. The, the kid hasn't stopped. Honestly, he kind of just had a diva moment, and I thrive off of diva moments so i loved it <laughs> i think it was everything he has a new album coming out like the man is smart he knows what he's doing and now everyone's looking at bieber and they're going to be waiting for his new album like i am they so just like, can't touch him exactly what do you mean is it too late now to say sorry taryn oh, <laughs> Let me know. can taylor swift shake off 42 million dollars r&b singer jesse bram who is he is suing taylor swift for plagiarizing the chorus of shake it off more specifically, her line, players gonna play, 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 and the haters gonna hate, 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 hate. Bram argues that there is a line in one of his songs that says, haters gonna hate, players gonna play. Close, but not quite. Bram is quoted as saying, if I didn't write the song, haters gonna hate, there wouldn't be a song called Shake It Off. His terms for forgiving Taylor was for a selfie with her and writing credits on the song. When Taylor denied those requests, he filed a lawsuit. Ellie, what do you think about this? Jesse Bram, who are you, first of all? Second of all, those are pretty common common <laughs> sayings. I say those every day. I, I didn't get them from Taylor Swift. Every single day. You just I have could, so I many could, haters. I could say that I could sue her. <laughs> Honestly, any of us could. Okay. That'd be rude. Okay, I know. I would never she do it. She could sue you because now you're <laughs> saying her line. True. Very <laughs> true. <laughs> you know what? Shake It Off is not our song because our song is the slam of screen doors. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Drops mic. <laughs> That's exactly. it. You didn't drop your mic because we can it. all still hear you. Bye. It's attached to me. <laughs> it's literally attached to you and it hasn't been dropped. It's not going anywhere. Over it. Well, the story is. So, Hitting the Stands this week is Prison Ramen, which is a book detailing a few celebrities' times behind bars, including none other than Shia LaBeouf, with his essay, Error Breeds Sense. LaBeouf has been incarcerated five, count them five times, the first of which was at age nine for stealing a pair of Nike shoes from a local shop. And LaBeouf shares that this experience in jail has helped his creativity and comments on the book's release, saying, thinking about my screw ups really loosens the grip of fear. It's freeing to mess up and recover. Kate, do you think you need to go to jail to mess up and recover? Um, that's a great question, Alex. I would just say that Shia's really digging a hole for himself, if you will. And, um, I mean, Shia is the new orange. That's all I'm saying. The whole reference, though. I mean, um, we're, we go to Syracuse, so I don't think you could say that. No one's the new orange. I'm just saying that, like, I think he can really rock a jumpsuit, and I heard that they can make toilet wine. Toilet wine? Can he, though? I think they can make toilet wine, and you put ketchup in a toilet and mix it with water, and I've just heard it's prison wine. Creativity. That's all I'm say. Right there, that's what he went yeah. for. Hopefully so. he talks about that in his book, because I'd love to know how. I mean, Good for I think it be important. Yeah. Everybody has their own way. You know, but also it's like, why, why did he write this thing saying that he needed to be in prison 
to learn these. Like, he's been there five times. Like, Shia, do you just want to move in? Like, are you getting a suite? Like, literally, let me know. Like, he ain't shy of nine. prison. He ain't yeah. shy of yeah. yeah. prison. He ain't shy of nothing. Oh All right, God. well, on that note, good for you, Shia. So we will be back after this with some news on the Victoria's Secret Fashion Show. Stick around, on Peelers. You got a key? Go fish! In your face, in your face, in the smallest your moments face. can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. This makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Jesus. Welcome back. So this week, the roster for the Victoria's Secret annual fashion show was released, and I'm excited. Making headlines are Gigi Hadid and Kendall Jenner, who will be christening the Victoria's Secret runway for the very first time. But disaster struck when Rihanna backed out of performing at the last minute with just a week before the show's taping, and now is handing the mic off to Ellie Goulding. She claims that it was to work on her album, but I think she had plenty of time since her last album was released in 2012. Whatever, Riri. The show will air on December 8th at 10 p.m. Kate, I'm very passionate about the Victoria's Secret Passion Show. What are your thoughts? Um, I would say that I, I, the Victoria's Secret Fashion Show is really perfect for me because I really want to get all my binge eating and drinking and bloatiness out in one night, and I think that that's the perfect night for me. You yeah, know? great music. Um, do you have like a meal of choice that you like to eat? Because for me, if I could just consume a whole chicken, just like just with my hands and without Fried utensils, though. yes, I think that'd be really good. I for usually me. put like a tub of Ben and Jerry's on my stomach. Also, <laughs> I wear like really big sweatpants and like yes. sometimes a snuggie. Like it depends on the weather. Oh yes, and I like to not shave my legs for it. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That's a personal choice. <laughs> it is a personal choice. Thanks for noting. <laughs> yup. What do you guys like to do? Well, I like to shave my legs, so. <coughs> I'm a shaver. Yep. Oh my gosh. Anyways, I'm, I'm pumped about Kendall Jenner. Can we focus on that one? I'm, I'm excited that Kendall's going to be on it. I honestly think it was a very good move for them because Kendall's been so relevant recently, so yeah. people are going to watch just because she's on it. So, good move, Victoria's Secret. Love ya. While marriage is based off of tradition, this couple chose to take a very non-traditional approach. A Canadian man proposed to his girlfriend with his wisdom tooth. Yes, his tooth that came out of his mouth. His fiance told ABC that a diamond ring isn't her style. Well, you know, it is my style. So, Ellie, what are your thoughts? How would you feel if you got a tooth ring? Uh, well, I used to wear a shark to tooth necklace back in the day. Oh, so. Did someone propose to you with it? <laughs> no, I bought it she myself. Wishes. I'm marrying yeah. myself, I guess. So. Okay, feeling um, yourself. Yeah, uh, I don't. I mean, I don't mind it at all. Like, <laughs> I trendy. People are so be so into being trendy these days. That's right? not trendy. <laughs> Excuse me. What if it's I just ha What if I just hacked up a hairball <laughs> and put it on a ring and proposed to you? That's essentially the same thing. Okay, Rings are I bet they, cl guys. they clean the tooth. I'm sure they clean the tooth. It's not like it's like straight. Okay, yeah, like it's, blade, not, like, it's not like he was like ah, and then like put this it is, on the ring. This is appalling to me because like I'm the girl. Like when I get proposed to, like I will take that rock, be like, hold that thought, go to the bathroom, scratch it on the mirror. Like that's got to be real. Oh my like, god! Don't even show your true color. Dex. Don't even. And my color is not wisdom tooth. Let me tell you, <laughs> is my color you? is rock. Is that you or Chanel speaking? I think that's probably both. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Looking to make some quick cash? Go to Byron Wall, a dentist in Albuquerque, New Mexico. He is offering $1 per pound of candy to go to children's ages 
From children ages 14 and under, he collected over a thousand pounds of candy last year alone. And in November, the collected candy is packaged along with clothes and food, then sent to soldiers. Taryn, this is about the sweetest thing I've ever heard, pun totally intended. What do you think about this? I think this sends a great message, honestly. Like, this is a good story. This is something that should be happening. And if I was 14 or younger, I'd be hyped about a dollar. So, like, that's what every, I'm saying. everybody wins. Think that's about like, how much candy you lug around. Like, that is not one pound. Snickers is worth definitely more than one dollar. I mean, I give my almond joys. Get out yeah, of here. Yeah, I, I take <laughs> it. I that. take it. It's a great thing. I'm hype about a dollar, and I'm 21. So, <laughs> I'm going to go out there and buy some candy. You got I mean, a fake would, ID, yeah. 14 <laughs> years old. Do you have to be 14? Like, I'm gonna, or under to donate you to can soldiers? Be three years I really old, hope not. If you want. I really hope not. All right. Well, I gotta go. To, gotta go change that. And then you gotta move to <laughs> Albuquerque, New Mexico. Kate, um, I'm a nerd and a smarty, and I just love candy. <laughs> oh <my> right. God. <laughs> I am so over you. <laughs> Is everybody else over Thanks her? For I'm sharing. over her. Whatever. <laughs> Stick around, guys, because up next we'll be following Kate through a haunted house. Don't look at me. Your hair's a bit frizzy today. Aww. You should pick that up. <laughs> oh, you're such a dork. Loser. Here, let me help you with that. Oops. <laughs> Every day, kids witness bullying. Oh, look. Your crush is looking at you. <laughs> Poor you. They want to help, but don't know how. See, no one here's going to help you. because no one. Teach your kids you. how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. Jimmy can't sing, and Tommy can't dance, so we're, we're gonna, gonna put some hands in their pants. Aww. The kids will spend 22 minutes watching us, the super duper party troopers, sing about ants in their pants. Isn't that funny? Ants in their pants, they got ants in their pants, they got ants in their pants, they got ants in their pants. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Looks like it's done. Don't let salmonella get funky with your chicken. On average, one in six Americans will get a foodborne illness this year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So learn the right temperature to cook each type of meat. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. Are still clearly not over. We sent our reporter Kate to a haunted house, and our dear friend Ellie had a great time recording her terror. Let's take a look. Hey guys, I'm here at Delta Phi Epsilon's second annual haunted house. I'm gonna be honest, I'm really terrified of scary things. I'm I use a nightlight, um, but I'm about to go through this, so come on with me. I don't want to do this. I I don't I don't want to no. Okay, no, stop. Okay, all right.
I think I just ran a marathon. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta call my doctor after that. For Sarah Keeps Unpeeled, it's Kate Bernhardt. Thanks for stopping by. So Kate, do you still feel like you just ran a marathon? Yes, sincerely. And the best part is you didn't even notice, but Ellie was behind the camera and she kept on poking me, which was incredibly rude. <laughs> I'm not over it, <laughs> but she kept on touching me, and I thought that like you know the Martians or whatever they were were touching me, but it was just her. Ellie, I think that's a rule in haunted houses that you're not supposed to touch. Exactly. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean exactly? You broke the rule. There, it was I'm so pretty much sure fun. that's the only rule. <laughs> she was freaking out, and I just wanted to add dramatic effects. So. <laughs> I think that we couldn't have sent anyone better through the haunted house, honestly. <laughs> I mean, I'm a drama queen you're in a, a real, haunted house. You're a real screamer. That's what she said, but yes, I was a real I'm screamer. I'm she, and I said it, and you did it. You took my point literally, so I thank did. you for that. You're welcome. So thanks, Kate and Ellie. So up next, I'm going to be sitting down with Claudia Lewis, an artist who designs custom art pieces, stickers, and shoes. Stick around, guys. Psst, they're coming. Please, is everybody. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No, no, no. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. Welcome back on Peeler. So joining me now, I have Claudia Lewis, who took her artistic skills to the next level, drawing on shoes for people, selling custom stickers and art pieces. Claudia, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Well, welcome. I'm glad you like kind of almost came in costume. Kind of. It was a last it's minute. It's okay. You yeah. know. We didn't give you much time. Yeah, no. So let's just get right into it. When did you, like, really get to become so artistic? Like, when did you decide that art was something that you wanted to, like, pursue? Um, well, I've always been drawing ever since I was a little kid. It was, like, one of those things where your mom always, like, puts crayons in front of you, and I always had it in my hand. And I think once I got to high school and started thinking about my future, I kind of realized that I'm not good at math or science or gym or any of those subjects. So I was like, all right, I guess I'm just gonna have to go in that direction. I guess I'll just have to I draw. I guess I have to. So when you were a kid, were you the type that was coloring inside of the lines, outside? No. Like, would you consider yourself a good colorer? I color out of the lines in many <gasps> aspects of my life. Wow, <laughs> she colors outside of the lines. Okay. You hear that, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Different. Okay, so. The first thing that I basically learned about you generally was that you won a contest with Vans yeah. that you basically got to like draw on sneakers for people right. and like design them however you wanted. Like how did that work? So it was through my art school or art class at school um, and someone just was like, oh, I have these shoes it's for a contest. I drew them. They were like a Philadelphia themed shoe because okay. um, I'm from outside of Philly and uh, it kind of became a thing. People in school heard about it and they were like, oh, I want, 
you know, this university or I want this on a shoe. I did like vegetables for one shoe. And it became like this really fun, unique thing. And I got to meet a bunch of people and yeah. That's great. So you really have cool. your Instagram, Shoes by yeah, Claude. Yeah, Shoes by Claude. Which I love. Yeah. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> so you haven't done them in a while though. No. Like, do you want to go back to doing that? I think it's more of like a summer job, I okay. like to say. So when I go home, I kind of have more time and I can kind of sit down and do it. But like when I'm here. Because I would imagine it would yeah. like take, how long does it usually take to make one pair of shoes? It takes a good amount of time, like probably, depending on the size of the shoe and like the detail, it'll take up to like two days. Okay. But like that's like me sitting down and like really working okay. on it. Okay, so them. then the next thing that you did from there was you started making stickers on Redbubble. Yeah. So how does that work for people that don't know what Redbubble is and what kinds of stickers are you making? Um, so Redbubble is a website where you can basically design your own things or you can, I, I know a lot of people buy stickers for their computers or laptops. Um, and I thought, okay, that's kind of cool. I wonder if I can do it. And I looked online, and it's really easy to do. All you have to do is upload it. Um, and you can do your own designs or, you know, base it off of someone else's designs. And um, I really liked avocados. So I was like, and I want an avocado in. sticker. They're very in. They're very trendy right now. And Just they're really so delicious. Funny. So I was like, all right, I want avocado stickers, but I couldn't find them on Redbubble. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to make them. So is av are avocados your favorite food? And your favorite sticker to make also. Yes. So just your favorite. Yes. Here. You should have been an avocado today. I, yes. Given if I had more time, I would have shown up as an avocado. All right. Well, yeah. she would have been an avocado. Yeah. I'm not really an avocado person, unpopular opinion. Um, no. But coming up next, we are going to play Box of Lies. Super I'm excited. excited. I'm going to win. Stick around, guys. <laughs> How you doing? My name's Steve. My family's lived in this neighborhood for years. Recently, things got so tight, we had to go to our local food bank for help. I lost a lot of sleep worrying about what the neighbors might think. That is, until I saw them there, too. How'd I do, Steve? A little stiff. If you could have done a little what? better. What? Come on! You know, I have an Academy Award. Yeah, but not for playing me. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. all Smokey wants for his 70th birthday. Here is my handle and here is my spell. When I get all steamed up, then I shout. Tip, Tip me over and, and pour me out. Oh. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Cheers. Take time to be a dad, today. I've got a job to do today. I've got a job to do today. Have a good first day at work, Mom. Your donations to Goodwill fund job training programs right in your community. Feels good to start fresh, right? Sure does. And like that, you're a job creator. Welcome back, Unpeelers. So now we are going to play Box of Lies. There are six boxes on the shelves for us to pull from. And after one of us chooses a box, we'll describe what's in it to our opponent. The twist is we can lie about what's in the box. So our opponent has to decide if we are telling the truth or if we're lying. And the stuff in this box is like really ridiculous. So let's see, why don't we have, do you wanna go first? Yes. All right, <laughs> banana, a box, please. please. Dun, dun, dun. Yay. Okay, and don't show me what's inside the box. Okay. Like. Okay. And you don't have to take it out; just leave it in there. All right. Um, Should I put on my sunglasses so I can bluff? That's yes. fun. Yeah. Um, okay. It is a miniature pumpkin wearing eyeliner and lipstick. And it has toothpicks sticking out of it. You're lying. You're lying. Let me see. 
I was lying. Boo! No toothpicks! Good job, Alex. You're great. I added that in. Graciela, can I have a box, please? Yeah. Thanks. Can I wear your sunglasses? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? I might put them back on, though. In my box okay. is a Barbie doll with a ballerina tutu and a piece of bubble gum in her hair. That's a lie. That is a lie. It's a Capri Sun. <laughs> it was really a lie. Really wasn't the truth. Can we drink it? Can I? <gasps> There's no straw. Otherwise, I would say yes. Let's save that one for later. Bummer. All Let's right, banana. It. Okay. Can we get a straw for this? Okay. <laughs> big box. It's a big box. You know what they say about big boxes? <laughs> big shoes. Wow, this is a lot to digest. Is it? Yeah. Does that mean it's food? <laughs> um, it's not food. Is that the only? No. <laughs> um, is that it? <laughs> it is a bunch of tissue paper. And there are intricate drawings on the tissue paper. And, and yeah. All right. Um, well, you're you, telling you the truth. Call? Nope. Nope. She's she won, man, guys. All right. Well, looks like I got a wrap. How unfortunate. It's not Halloween anymore. Somebody should have warned me. It's not stick around. Why do I always want you guys to stick around? Because I love you so much. Come back next week, guys.